So, uh, so I'm going to walk through the anomaly rate on every chart um, that we've added recently. So this is um, embedded anomaly rate that's available on each chart, basically either on the overview tab or the single node view uh, in that data. Uh, and I'm going to show, I'm going to walk through how to kind of read this chart. Um, I have a good example here on this particular node where um, I actually did an update, a uh, system update. This node is running Airbyte, which is used to do some ETL jobs. And I, I did an update on the on the Airbyte system. And you can see kind of in the anomalies tab, you can see an obvious anomaly here at the overall uh, node level. Um, but if I if I want to go back and just look at, in, at an individual chart, um, it's just a nice example to see um, how the anomaly rate on every chart works. So what we have is we have this little uh, icon up here next to the information icon, which is the same. It's the, the anomalies, same icon as the anomalies tab, basically. And what you can do is you can kind of pop this guy down. And what that will give you now is the um, the anomaly rates for every dimension, basically, on the chart below. So if I, um, let me go full screen to make this fairer. So here what we have is on this top uh, subchart, we can see the actual anomaly rate for each for each dimension. So if I just take one dimension here, like um, the, this, the, the system CPU, say if I just click this in legend, I can see, you know, as the, I can see the raw, metric for the system CPU on the, you know, the usual chart on below. And then on top, I have the corresponding anomaly rate. So if I zoom in, um, we'll be able to see the, the moments when the anomaly bit turned on for this particular raw metric values. So you can see here, okay, sometimes you get these like little spikes, but they're generally kind of not that unusual. But then when you see this big kind of batch of spikes together, that's when the anomaly rate sort of turns on. And likewise, when it happens again here, that's when the anomaly rate tends to turn on. And um, so when you when you just look at this for all dimensions, you can kind of quickly see which were, you know, what are the dimensions that were anomalous and when. And the interesting thing here, here is you can see that actually it's, it's, um, it's really a combination of, uh, we have some IO weights, um, some system and, um, uh, some nice, like you can see, the, these are the dimensions that actually went anomalous. That aren't, they're usually not really that active. Um, and funny enough, when you look at the user itself, you can see that the user, the anomaly rate is not turned on for the user for these these spikes. And that's kind of because these spikes aren't actually that unusual on this system for this user dimension. Whereas the spikes like this for the system dimension are unusual. And you can actually sort of see that, you can get a good feel for that um, on any chart if you just look back, say, the last few hours. Um, by default, the machine learning uses the last four hours. So all, all the anomaly rates ever know about really is the last four hours um, by, by default for now. We're kind of working on extending that to be 24 hours or longer if users want. Um, but what you can see here is if I zoom out enough to, to get sort of the full four hour window before say, and that would be roughly what this, that's roughly anything that the ML has learned about. You can actually see that there is all these user spikes. And let me just uh, unhighlight this area just so it's clear. So you can see that we do actually have these kind of spikes every every so often. These are actually ETL jobs kicking off on a schedule, I think, every hour or so. Um, but you can see that this this spike, sort of a spike like this to happen in user CPU is not really that unusual. So that's why we don't actually have an anomaly right here for this, for this particular dimension. Whereas if you look at the, the, the system, CPU, we can see that, okay, it's, it's generally bounces around 1%. There's a few little tiny little blips here and there, but there's, there is not really any big spikes like this. So a big spike in the system CPU is actually anomalous. And you can see correspondingly, the anomaly rate then uh, jumps up as well. And you can see here it says 25%, but that's just kind of uh, an aggregation because we zoomed out. If, if we zoom in, we'll see it sort of goes back up. Once we zoom into enough resolution, we'll see where it goes up to you know, 100%, 60%. Uh, once you, basically, once you get back to second second level resolution, this would be all, um, it's either on or off because it, when each second is just the anomaly bit, so it's a one or a zero. But when you when you zoom out to a, a higher aggregation, it starts becoming like an anomaly rate. So this is how you can kind of quickly, um, looking at a chart, 
if you're curious, you know, if you see something like like these spikes and you're wondering, is this strange? You know, is this is this an anomalous um, time period for this particular dimension? Well, here we can say, well, that data is telling us that actually in terms of the user, um, user CPU, Net data doesn't consider this to be anomalous because it has seen sort of jumps like this before. Um, and you, you as a human might disagree with that, but actually the way this works is because the uh, the, the ML works on the differences of, of all these raw metrics. So this first jump is a big difference and then it's sort of back the same. And then the second drop is another big jump. So these two big jumps um, is what, if anything, the ML will pick up. But because we saw that, you know, there is these, this happens, common enough once you zoom out to a long enough window you see these big jumps that are common enough well then the ml kind of sees that well this this big jump isn't that much different than this big jump and you know it's it's not um considered anomalous whereas if you look at the other dimension you can see it is considered anomalous because it's there's less we've not seen anything like this before so um that's just a quick quick idea of how to kind of quickly have a look at these and see basically places where you agree with the anomaly rate, where it makes sense. And also just within the chart, give you some context. So you can see straight away, okay, um, nice is really anomalous here. So that's usually hardly anything. And then it's it's turned on a bit more and that's considered very anomalous. So there's there's all different ways that you can kind of see. Same with the IO weight basically, where IO weight is usually, we usually don't have any. And then for whatever reason, when we did this update, um, we had some IO weight and you can see straight away this is, this is considered anomalous because we've never seen the ML had never seen this before for this particular dimension. Um, so this is just a quick handy thing. The idea is here that this is now available within any chart, so you can kind of quickly, um, if you're looking at some area of interest or as you're exploring that data, you can quickly, um, you know, have a look at it, have a look at a chart and see is this without having to kind of scroll back and look at the last 24 hours in one window. You can you can kind of quickly get a feel for it and see some context, some extra context for the raw metrics. So in this case, you can see well, obviously, yeah, um, we had a lot of a lot of network received traffic, um, and that was considered anomalous. Um, likewise, with my RAM here, when I did the update, we saw that the RAM RAM dropped, uh, so free RAM went down, and as the free RAM went down, obviously the anomaly rates turned on. So you can just quickly within the moment uh, get a little bit of extra context as to if the raw metrics you're looking at are considered anomalous or not by net data. Uh, so yeah, that's all. Uh, any feedback, please uh, send it on to us. Thank you.